Hey, Canucks fans, it's Canucks game day. It's the Canucks, it's the Ducks, and the Canucks are looking for only their fourth three-game win streak of the season. I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, March the 8th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for Daily Canucks Insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. To all of my female viewers out there, female subscribers and members, happy International Women's Day. Thank you for all that you do, and more importantly, for who you are. Tonight, I am doing two shows. I have Game Over Vancouver for the SDPN Network, so make sure you join me right after the game for that. And then my own show right here on my own channel at 11 p.m., which will be a lot of similar things, I presume. So I hope you can join me for that as well. So the Canucks, they've only had three three-game win streaks. And I know that because usually when I do a three-game win streak, I think two of the three of them, I've done some sort of horrible dance on my channel. I'm not saying that I'm going to do that tonight. We'll see what happens. But yes, the Canucks have only had three three-game win streaks, and that makes sense when you look at the standings of where they are. And they, I don't think they've had a four-game win streak yet this season. But to get to four, you got to get to three first. Canucks should be able to do that tonight. Anaheim is one of the six teams in the league that are worse than the Canucks. And uh, I remember last time Anaheim was here, that was that crazy 8-5 victory by Vancouver. So I'm not sure what we'll see tonight. Um, I do know that Anaheim's got a lot of younger players. I'm not going to the game. By the way, I am selling one more pair of tickets to tonight's game. If you want to go, uh, hit, shoot me an email at uh, canutclay at gmail.com. So it's a pair in my in my lower bowl. So last time they were here, Canucks blitzed the Ducks 8-5 to five in a very uh, big defensive matchup, as you can tell. And it, Canucks, uh, the Ducks have a lot of exciting players, especially in Zegris, in, in Terry. And, and you know, they, so they do have some young players for sure. But uh, overall, they're, they're just not that strong. And I, I do think the Canucks should beat them tonight. Now, to do so, the Canucks are basically using the exact same lineup as they, they iced on Monday night. When they beat Nashville Predators, except uh, they're changing the goaltender. So Demko will get the start instead of Silovs, who actually started for Delia. So it should be Demko tonight. And then on the back end, the same six, the amazing crew of Hughes with Juleson. you got some Breezeball and Myers. And then Wolanin with Burroughs. Yes, again, uh, a, a defensive crew that has Breezeball, Burroughs, Wolanin and Juleson. I'll talk about Breezeball in a second uh, to end off this vlog. He, he has a new contract, which is good for him. Up front, the same 12 forwards. Pedersen with Kuzmenko and Beauvillier. Then you have Dakota Joshua riding shotgun with JT Miller and Brock Besser. Third line, uh, sorry, that's Phil DiGiuseppe, my bad. Phil DiGiuseppe, Rick Tockett's favorite. He is playing with Miller and Besser. Then the third line of Oman, centering Joshua and Garland, like two really tall guys and one not-so-tall guy in Garland. And then the fourth line of drives between the two Russians of Kratsov and Podkolzin. So that's uh, that's how they lined up on Monday night against Nashville, and that's how they'll line up tonight. Again, the exact same team, all 18 skaters the same, except you're changing the goaltender. And then they also worked on some power play units, and the one noticeable change is Besser was taken off the first unit replaced by Beauvillier. So that your top unit has Hughes up top, Kuzmenko in front of the net. Then you're putting Beauvillier in the bumper with Miller and PD flanking him. And then on the second unit, Besser's in the bumper, Garland and Kratzov are with him. Then you have, who is it? I think it must be Dries in front of the net. And then Wolanin up top. So, you know, not their strongest power play unit ever when you your guys' names like Wolanin and Dries, but they've been playing well. And hopefully that unit, uh, as they've done in the past, they can chip in uh, maybe a good effort or even a goal would be a big help to the Vancouver Canucks. Rick Tockett was asked why Beauvillier instead of Besser, and he hinted that Beauvillier is maybe a little bit better at puck retrievals, but that we shouldn't get too caught up in in uh, you know in, in who's playing on the first unit. Like that, it could basically change day to day from game to game. Speaking of Tockett. He has a winning record now since he's come here. He's 8-7-2, so that's um, 18 points in 17 games, so just a shade over 500. And, yeah, let me know what you think about um, – I, I, this is what I was going to talk about in my stream tonight uh, a little bit, is what sort of improvements have you seen under Rick Tockett since he's taken over? 
Is it better discipline, better structure, better better penalty kill? Is it more shorthanded goals? Is it um, better goaltending, more balanced scoring? And I'm not saying it's all those things, but um, you know, you can put that in the comments or, or something to think about is, is why are the Canucks playing better? Or is it strength of schedule? Bruce Boudreau made that remark about he thought that they were making the coaching change when they did because it was setting up for a nice schedule in front of the new head coach. So whatever the reason is, uh, or whatever the motivation is, let me know. Obviously, the Canucks are too talented to lose every game. Uh, they're obviously going to try, and by trying, their average, I've said this many times before, their their average skill level is higher than, say, Anaheim or Columbus or Chicago. So if both teams were both just playing average, the Canucks are going to beat a lot of those teams that are below them in the standings, and I believe that the Ducks are one of them. Finally, a feel-good story. Jan Brisbois, the defenseman, he signs a new two-year contract extension. So probably for, I think it's only 750 grand, so close to the league minimum. But it's two years, and it's it's a little bit interesting the way it's set up. And that the first year, for 23-24, uh, it's a two-way contract. And uh, the easiest way to think about that is is you get paid two ways. You get paid a Vancouver Canucks salary, but when you're the Myers, you get paid an Abbotsford Canucks salary. So it's either going to be 750 grand or it's going to be about a hundred grand or whatever the Abbotsford salary is. So obviously a two-way contract is not as good. So Breezeball has that for the first year of his extension. But then for the second year of his extension, it's only a one-way contract uh, and that's better. And one way means you only get paid one way. So whether he's in the minors in Abbotsford or on the big club in Vancouver, he's going to get paid the same 750 grand. So that's why a one-way is obviously better than a two-way. And I think, uh, that's probably something that Breeze Bond and his agent negotiated is, is okay, if you're not going to give us uh, a two-year contract that's one way for both years, why don't we do one and one? And it just gives Breeze Bond more incentive to obviously become a, a regular staple in the Canucks lineup. So Breeze Ball, good story. He's pretty solid. He had that one bad giveaway leading to the, the tying goal against Nashville. But overall, I thought he's played very well. And he's playing with Tyler Myers. And that pair has been just fine. They haven't been... Uh, bad. They certainly haven't been bad and, and noticeable in any negative way at all. So congratulations to Guillaume Brisbois for getting a brand new uh, two-year contract extension. Canucks fans, let me know what you think. I still think it's going to be high scoring tonight, but with Demko and Ned, I don't think we're going to give up five. I'm going to go with a 5-2 victory for Vancouver. 5-2, and let's go with Pedersen scoring his first goal of the year. So, <laughs> the first goal, what am I talking about? He has 30. The first goal of the game. Kuzmenko is the next chasing down 30. He's got he's sitting at 29 goals, but I'm going with Pedersen for the first Canucks goal scorer. Then we got join me at uh, around 9:45 for game over, and then at 11 p.m. for my own show, Clay's Canucks commentary. Shout out to my sponsors, Vanseed Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Thank you, Legendary Lucas Gates, Legendary Just Incredible, Legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and franchise members as well. And thanks to all of you for watching and supporting and subscribing. I always appreciate you. Never take you for granted. On your way out, subscribe, like the video, leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership, and leave a comment with your score prediction and a first Canucks goal scorer. I will not be at the game. I'll be at church, then I'll be home to watch the, at least the this last part of the second period and the rest of the third. Then I'm going to try and talk about what I saw. So, um, yeah, if you want tickets, I have one pair. Shoot me an email, canucklay at gmail.com. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day and enjoy the Canucks game tonight. God bless and go Canucks go.